everyone. My name is Mrs. Kinman. I hope that you're ready for another third grade reading lesson because I have a great one that I'm really excited to share with you today. I hope that you're having a great day and that you are ready to learn. Let's get started. So before we get started with our lesson, we always want to make sure that we're in the right mindset for learning. So I want you to think about your learning gems. I'm going to share with you some of my learning gems. Gems is an acronym that I like to use. And I like to think about what's something that I'm grateful for. Well, something that I am grateful for is that we have access to so many books online. Because, you know, so many of my favorite books are at school. And, I, of course, I can't go to the physical school building right now. We can't go to the libraries right now. And so you probably have just a certain number of books at home. But there are so many books that are available to us for free online. And I'm really grateful for that. Something that I'm excited about is we're going to be talking about plot today. And when you're thinking about plot, you're thinking about beginning, middle, and end of the story. And that's something that you can use to retell the story. And I love retelling stories. It's one of the, my favorite parts about reading is then being able to retell the story. Something that I am motivated to do is to share these stories with my family. I've been preparing these lessons for you, and so I'm really excited about the stories that we're going to be reading, and I'm motivated to share them with my family. And a success that I think that we could celebrate is the partnership with EVSC and WNIN to be able to bring you these lessons through your TV and also on your computer. So I think that's definitely a success that we all can celebrate. I think we're in a good mindset for learning now. So what are your learning gems? Next, I want you to think about your whole body listening skills. Remember, listening is about more than just using those ears. Let's look at listening, Larry, and think about all the things that we need to focus on to be in the right mindset for learning. First, we're gonna listen with our eyes. So your eyes should be facing your screen right now. You're going to listen with your ears, making sure both of those ears are ready to hear. We're going to listen with our mouth, meaning you're going to be quiet when you are listening. However, I do want to add, I hope that you're talking to me. I hope that you're talking about your learning. When I ask a question, you go ahead and respond as if I'm standing right there in your family room with you. Because when you're talking about your learning, that's really taking your brain into different, um, different areas of your brain and it just enhances your learning. So go ahead and feel free to talk to that screen just like I'm standing in front of you, okay? Uh, we're gonna listen with our hands and feet, meaning those are gonna be quiet and still. We're gonna get our wiggles out. We're gonna listen with our body, make sure that you're facing the speaker so that you can really have your full attention where it needs to be right now. And then lastly, we're going to listen with our brain, meaning you're going to be thinking about the lesson and thinking about what we're talking about, and we're listening with our heart. We have an open heart. We're ready to learn something new. All right, let's get started. So this is a quick review. If you watched um, some of the previous reading lessons, you know that we're talking about fables in this unit. A fable is a short fictional story that was written a long time ago and it always teaches a moral or a lesson. So we're gonna be taking a look at a new fable today. Uh, another reminder, Aesop is most famously known for uh, writing over 600 fables. He actually told his stories orally and then much later someone wrote them all down, but he is still credited with all of those famous fables. Uh, so Aesop is a, is a famous name when it comes to fables. And then these are just some examples of different fables that you are probably familiar with. Uh, the tortoise and the hare is one that we talked about before. Um, the lion and the mouse, the fox and the crow, the crow and the pitcher, and then the ant and the grasshopper is what we're going to be talking about today. All right, so our purpose for listening is we want to be able to retell the story. So some of the things that you need to keep in mind when you're listening is how would I retell this story? I'm gonna think about the plot, the beginning, middle, and end. I also want you to think about how would you describe those main characters? And what do you think is the moral of the story? That's always a great thing to be thinking about when you're thinking about um, a fable is can you identify the moral or the lesson in the story? So let's take a listen to this version of the, the ant Aesop's and the fables. grasshopper. The ant and the grasshopper. The 
There once was a grasshopper who liked to play with his flute. Then one day he met a large group of ants, all of them carrying loot. What are you doing? asked the grasshopper, wanting to know. We are gathering food for the winter, they replied, before it starts to snow. But the grasshopper played with his flute without a single care. while the ants had to carry apples and peaches, and even a pear. Then the grasshopper saw a berry and took it in one go. That made the ant angry, but then it started to snow. The ant took the berry back and quickly ran away. the grasshopper took his flute and continued to play. Then a blizzard came around and the grasshopper had nothing to eat. So he went to the ant's home, hoping to meet. He looked through their window, and what did he see? He saw ants laughing and eating and all full of glee. So he knocked on the door, and it opened to show the ant he met earlier, now wondering what the grasshopper was here for. Can I have some food? asked the grasshopper, hoping for a bite. You did no work, said the ant, so nothing for you, and it serves you right. So the grasshopper walked away with nowhere to go. But he learned his lesson next summer and was now in the know. Today, he helps with the work and has made amends. and now spends winter with the ants, his newfound friends.
All right, what a great story. That is a famous fable that has been retold in this way. So I hope that you were thinking about the plot, what happened at the beginning, what happened in the middle, and what happened in the end. What were some of the ways that we could describe those characters, the ant and the grasshopper? And I also hope that you're thinking about what is the moral of the story? Now we're going to read a different version. It's very similar, but now we are going to read this version together. So I'm gonna give you a second to move a little closer to your screen because this story is gonna be on the screen for you and I would love for you to read along with me. Are you ready? The Ant and the Grasshopper. One sunny summer day, Ant was hard at work gathering food and bringing it back to his home to be stored away for the winter. While taking a brief rest from carrying an acorn, he heard the most beautiful music. Looking around, Ant spotted Grasshopper leaning against a rock playing his violin. Ant approached him and complimented him. My, you make some fine music with your instrument. Why, thank you, replied Grasshopper with pride. Come join me. We could have fun and dance and enjoy these beautiful days together. Though the offer sounded tempting, Ant replied, I can't. I'm busy storing up food for the winter. And with a warning, Ant added, I suggest you do the same, for winter is just around the corner. Not too thrilled about the idea of working, Grasshopper replied, Oh, Ant, can't you see? There is plenty to eat in these fields and winter is far from a splendid day like today. The season will change before you know it, cautioned Ant as he picked up his acorn and trudged his way home with the load. Soon the weather turned cold and Grasshopper woke to find the field that was once plentiful with food, buried under a blanket of snow. No matter how hard he tried, he was unable to dig down deep enough to reach it. Oh, what will I do now? cried Grasshopper in despair. And it was then that Grasshopper remembered the friend he had met in the peak of summer. So off to Ant's house he went in hopes of finding food and shelter. When Ant answered the door, he found a very cold and hungry Grasshopper. Grasshopper pleaded, Oh, Ant, please let me in and share your warm home and good food? Sadly, Ant replied, I've only stored up enough for my family and me. Sorry, friend, but I warned you of this day. I wish you had heeded my warning. And then Ant closed the door. So that version was very similar to the version that we listened to before with just a few small differences. So now let's think deeply about this story. First, let's talk about those character traits. Remember that characters and fables are often animals. There's usually just a couple, maybe two or three, and they often talk and act like humans. That's called personification. They have human-like or people-like qualities. So let's think about maybe those positive character traits and those negative character traits 
that we saw in both ant and grasshopper. <clears throat> when we think about how we describe the ant and the grasshopper, they're often, as often in fables, the characters have opposite character traits, and that is the case with our characters here of the ant and the grasshopper. So one positive character trait that I think of right away when I think of the ant is he is very wise. And the reason I know that the ant is wise is because he was proactive, because he was preparing for that long winter that he knew was coming. So if the ant is wise, how would we describe the grasshopper? Is he wise too? No, he is unwise because he was just wanted to play instead of preparing for the winter. Even though Ant had warned him, he just wasn't listening, right? So he was unwise. Let's go back to the ant. What's another positive character trait that we can think about the ant? Well, I would say that the ant, whoops, well, come on board, work with me, there we go. The ant was hardworking. Ant was hardworking because he worked hard over and over and over again to prepare, even though he was tempted to stop and play and listen to Grasshopper's music. But he didn't, he didn't stop working. He knew what he needed to do and he got that job done. So if we think about the ant being hardworking, what do we think about the Grasshopper? Would we describe him in the same way? Or what's that opposite character trait? <clears throat> Grasshopper was lazy. He was just sitting there, wasn't he? He played around when he should have been working hard. So these actually are both examples of opposites. Those characters had opposite character traits. For example, the opposite of hardworking is lazy. We can make some text to self connections. What do you think is most important when we think about character traits? What do you think is ant, uh, a character trait that would describe ant that you think is most important to you as a student? What do you think is a good character trait of ant that is also important to you as a student? I think that the, most, uh, the one that stands out the most in my mind is that the ant was proactive. He thought about what he would need for the winter ahead of time and he prepared during the summer. He was wise and he worked hard when it was time to work. This is important to being a good student because students need to be prepared and they need to be hardworking too. All right, now we're gonna talk about the plot of a story. When we think about the plot of a story, you can think about it sort of like a train and look at the different carts on the train. We think about the beginning, we think about the middle, and we think about the end. Something also to keep in mind when you're thinking about the beginning, middle, and end is the problem and the solution. Another word for problem and solution is conflict and resolution. So the problem or the conflict is the problem that the characters face. The resolution or the solution is how the problem is solved. So conflict and resolution or problem and solution and plot or beginning, middle and end of a story are things that we need to keep in mind when we go to retell a story. You don't just wanna tell one part of the story and leave out the others. You can't start in the middle, that would be confusing, right? We have to remember beginning, middle and end and also looking at it through the lens of problem and solution. So now let's think back to the grasshopper and the ant and think about the important events that happened in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end. What's something important that happened at the beginning of the story? Talk out loud and tell me, what do you think? I'll tell you what I think. At the beginning of the fable, it's a beautiful summer day, the ant is gathering food, and the grasshopper is playing music. Now when we go to the middle of the story, this is probably when you're gonna to start to state the problem or the conflict in the story. The grasshopper wants the ant to join him in play, but the ant remains focused on his task. 
he warns the grasshopper that he too should gather food. When you talk about the ending of the story, you want to be sure to include the solution or the resolution to the problem. Winter comes and the ant is well fed because he gathered food in the summer. Grasshopper is hungry and he learns his lesson. So see, we incorporated the problem and the solution into our retelling with the beginning, middle, and end. Let's think about what was the ant's point of view about the grasshopper situation at the end of the story. And do you agree? I want you to evaluate whether or not you agree. In some versions of this fable, the ant doesn't give grasshopper any food or shelter, like the versions that we read today. However, in other versions, he does give him some food. What do you think is best? I want you to evaluate what do you think is best for the ant to do? Now let's talk about the moral of this fable. So we need to think about both characters, what they wanted, what they did, and then what happened as a result of those actions. Well, ant wanted to store up food for the winter. What did grasshopper want? Well, grasshopper wanted to enjoy the music and um, just enjoy the summer, enjoy that beautiful weather. So what did Ant do? He worked hard to make sure that he had food. But what did the grasshopper do? He just played on and he did not listen to Ant's warning. So as a result of Ant's actions, what happened and why did that happen? He and his family had enough food for the winter and they had a warm shelter. He worked hard in order to be prepared. Well, what happened as a result of Grasshopper's actions? He, when winter came, he was cold and he was hungry. He did not work when it was time to prepare, so he was left cold and hungry. So taking these um, uh, thoughts about the ants and the grasshopper, what would you say is the moral of the fable? Remember, the moral can be found in the lesson learned by the character. Think about whether or not that story ends well for the character, whether it ends well for the character or if the character has some sort of consequence. In this case, I think our character of the grasshopper definitely had a consequence. So thinking about what the moral of the fable would be, it is wise to prepare today for the needs of tomorrow. It's so important to always be prepared. All right, now let's check for some understanding, okay? For this, we're gonna do a finger response. So for you to participate, I want you to have your fist ready, okay? And then you're gonna use your fingers to respond to these multiple choice questions. All right, we have three questions today. I'm gonna to read the question and the answer choices. If you think the answer is A, you'll hold up one finger. If you think the answer is B, you'll hold up two fingers. And if you think the answer is C, you'll hold up three fingers. So is your fist ready? All right, let's begin. Which character traits describe ant? Is it A, lazy and uncooperative, B, humble and polite, or C, wise and hardworking. Ready? One, two, three, respond. You should be holding up three fingers. Ant was wise and hardworking. Most definitely, you might have said he was humble and polite. Maybe he was a little bit, but C is definitely the best answer because those traits describe him throughout the whole fable. Let's try number two. Why did Ant think it was important to gather food? A, winter would eventually come and they would need food. B, he didn't like summer. Or C, grasshopper wasn't his friend. Are you ready? One, two, three, respond. You should be holding up one finger. The answer is A, Ant knew that winter would eventually come and they would need food. Number three, based on the moral of the fable, what could we predict the grasshopper will do next summer? Is it A, play music all day, every day? 
B, gather food to store for winter, or C, find new friends to play with. Ready? One, two, three, respond. You should be holding up two fingers. The answer is B. We could predict that next summer, Grasshopper will store food up for the winter. Very good. Now let's think about some next steps. If you want to continue the learning, if you want to continue to um, uh, think about this story and apply it to your life, you could write about how would this lesson apply to you in everyday life? You also could, you also could write about a time that you had to take care of a responsibility before you could do something you liked or you wanted to do. I can think of lots of examples about a time that I had to work hard or I had to get a certain job done before I could do something that I, that I wanted to do just for leisure. So thanks so much for working hard today. Today your code word to tell your teacher is read. So be sure to let your teacher know your code word for today is read. I hope that you enjoyed the lesson. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.